three, two, one. Yo, yo, this is Tony Boy. We're here at Outside Influence. I got a real good friend of mine here today. He goes by the name of DJ Low Pro. Peace, God. What's good, brother? Peace, world. What up, Buffalo? Eastside, downtown. Oh, what up, Albany, New York, in the building? Albany, the yo, building. Shout out to the entire Bronx. Shout out to all New York City. Matter of fact, all up and down to 95 South. And matter of fact, everybody's just getting back to the world. Just good to see everybody be here. Thanks for having me. Oh. Good to see you, brother. Love you, bro. So this is how we're going to get into it. As we start off every in interview, uh, the name, DJ Low Pro. How do we come up with Low Pro? Oh, man. There's like, there's a little bit to that, but um, not not necessarily so much, uh, you know, without getting into all like governments or whatever, but I mean, it's easy to find me, you know, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, just, you know, like affectionately, just whatever. It's like, so it's low, you know what I low, mean? Right. You know, short for... Loren, Lorenzo, Lorenz, whatever the fuck you want to say in whatever language. I'm, how am I for cursing? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And all that? I could talk over. <laughs> all right, cool. So, fuck all that shit. <laughs> the point is that um, I would uh, I, I would tag up, uh, not 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 with with uh, uh cans, but like with markers. So just as a ground school and stuff, I used to tag up profit. And it's like, Jerry came out with a song like in 94, like, can't stop the profit. And I'm like, yeah, you can't stop me, right? Okay. So I just started doing this like profit everywhere. So then it just became low pro, you know what I'm oh, saying? Low profit. So yeah, you know what I mean? It just kind of worked, LP. It just, everything just kind of fell into place, you know what I mean? The, you know how it's like when you're young, you get like a bunch of like nicknames and everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at a certain point, you're like, damn it, I'm tired of people coming up with nicknames for me and shit. So it's like, okay, yo, that one, we're, we're going to stick with that one. All right, <laughs> that one that one will work. And I don't know, man, 20 years later. 20. I think the math is right on that, but something like that, 20 years later. 20 so years. It's like, that's still, you know, it, it worked. And, and also, straight up, I mean, I'm not on camera like this. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like behind the scenes. It's like, it's, right. you know, low pro. You know what I mean? I like having the mask on and all that shit. I know that, not trying to message, but, you know, it is a message. Um, uh, but it's like now that we don't have to have masks on, it's like I still like having the mask. mask well, Y'all can't hear me now because you know <laughs> it's the mask. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm 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 a low profile individual, so that's what's up. Uh, oh, and Tony's my boy. That's how he gets his name, Tony Boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like that. There's always meaning to this shit. Good question. Tony's my boy. Uh, <laughs> Tony ain't my motherfucking boy. <clears throat> Sorry, but okay, Go ahead. so. How did you uh, get into DJing? Like, what, what were some of your first musical influences or like hip hop influences? Oh man, um, well, shit. I know that's like my favorite uh, artists back in the day was like, say, like Big Daddy Kane, BDP. Then you look at like, uh, like digging in the crates, uh, Tribe Called Quest, Brand Nubian. But let's look at this: Gangstar had Premiere. Right? right, EPMD had DJ Scratch. One of the first records I ever had was Parents Just Don't Understand, Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince. Notice how the DJ was mentioned first, Jazzy Jeff yeah, yeah, and the Fresh Prince. Mm -hmm. He's the DJ, I'm the rapper. Now, the B-side of the Parents Don't Understand was them live at Union Square. And that was like when the Transformer Scratch first came out. Okay. And if anybody out there knows this, then it's like, I'm telling you stuff that you already know. But it's like, the live performance was so dope. And it was just like, you know, five minutes, but he's just breaking down, dance with the drummer's beat, and it's yeah. like, and it's ill. I don't know, just kind of, kind of, kind of like, uh, you know, in inspired me. And especially at that time, it wasn't like, I mean, like, I didn't even know what I was getting into. I was just like, yo, this is cool. And I busted on my mom's record player trying to scratch on it and everything. And, it was a belt drive. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was not only was a belt drive, it had like like springs on the bottom. So it's like I'm there like not only messing up the 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 platter and the belt, I'm messing up the needle. Cause needles just like just just boom, 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 like 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 it's Beverly Hillbillies and shit, you know, I'm skipping I think on it. And, my grandmother. and messing up her Isaac Hayes records, you know what I mean? So it's like, well, all of that, it's like, I don't know. It wasn't really a hard, hard reach. To say like, yo, mom, you know what? You want me to do good in school? You should probably give me some turntables. Yeah. And what age was that? Yeah, that was like, I had to be like 
14, 15, something like that. And uh, she got me some real whack turntables. <laughs> And, um, it can't be whack if mom got them for you. Man. No, man, yo, big up my moms and all that, but straight up, my, <laughs> like my parents had like the, the, this principle that I really kind of dug because it's like, you know, we started off. <laughs> oh shit, I don't want to get too much into the business, but it's just like, yo, we started off in the Bronx, and it's like, you know, when uh, you know, from the Bronx to Jersey to like, lived in DC for a while, but when parents got together, got, got their stuff together. Not that they didn't have their shit together, but it's like when it was, uh, you know, when it was right, I'm up in Albany, right, right. and. Uh, you know, but there's kind of like more money around now. But they want to say like, yeah, you know what? Don't think that you got money now. I'm like, yeah, but I need some Jordans. Like, yeah. <laughs> now you don't. It's like, yo, <laughs> it's like I need some turntables. It's like, well, you got, you got, yo. She managed to like, I, I was, I was smart in school. I just didn't like doing the school shit. So it's like I bust out like maybe barely scraped a B plus A average. And I'm like, yeah, you get this. Come some bullshit turntables. Problem with not getting your kids Jordans or what they ask for. Because you don't want to spoil the kid. But then it's like, you know, I started, like, looking at other ways of making money. Right. And that was probably, like, just like a, like, they've tried to do the right thing. But that might have been a small error in parenting because they could have just easily said, hey, look, um, as long as you get perfect attendance, you can get whatever you want. Right. And then guess what? We've had perfect attendance. And I probably would have graduated UB, which is why I came up here. I guess I... I'm probably still going to UVA. Like, I think about it, man. <laughs> and if they think about it, I don't know. Whatever. I know they're not watching me, so it's cool. <laughs> but yeah. So anyhow, so uh, I ended up trading in these whack turntables and got like some text. All you could have is text. Um. So you know, just from there, it just kind of like really took off. It's just some some shit that you can just kind of gravitate towards and know that you're 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 kind of you know. It, it's like when you find something that you're good with, then you just you just run with it. Right. Um, at that time, there wasn't a whole lot of DJs, and I just been buying records. Went from collecting baseball cards to collecting comic books to collecting records. You right. know what I mean? Then it got into like you know sneakers and watches and you know just whatever, just like all all, all the stuff that like doesn't really define your personality but it's like you know you end up making it that because yeah, you kind of nerd out on shit, you know yeah. and, and you find like a lot of your, your affiliates your people I, I find like a lot of my people like a lot of, like, a lot of the, especially as like hip hop grows and grew especially when we're talking about the 90s you'd see more and more uh, I don't want to say outsiders but like newcomers right and 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 like and their thirst for for, for what was not really just immediately available because you know we're still like so under the radar at this point, you know what I mean? You had to find it, or at least, you know, at, at least know when your MTV Raps was not going to be on to not waste your time, like, right. trying to set your VCR and all that, because whatever. The point is, is that, you know, I found that people who really knew the the, the, the love for, for, for this music that we, we all have now grown up with, DJs more than anybody just, like, had to kind of know it. You had to spend money on records. You had to be, like, personally invested. You had to be, like, that nerd level of somebody who, like, collected baseball cards, comic books, shit like that. <laughs> right. And not for nothing, Albany was also a motherfucking gladiator school for DJs. Okay. Everybody came from New York. There were three radio stations between the college stations that played hip-hop, all mad live DJs. Everybody wanted to be, like, Funkmaster Flex or Ron G or, uh, let's see... I mean, Kid Capri, obviously, but right. on radio, you're looking at Flex, Red Alert, Pete Rock, for example. I'm sorry I didn't mention Pete Rock. Like, that's what I'm saying. You listen to these old albums that had real cuts on them. I go back and, like, try to emulate those cuts. You get radio tapes from New York or when you're in New York. Even when you're in the car, you're trying to record shit. Even if you're just not doing enough. You know, I don't know if anybody's car stereo had a <laughs> record button, but it's like, I had a Walkman that did, so I'd be next to the speaker with, like, shh, just picking shit up. Yeah. Um, all of that was just kind of, it became like my kung fu, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like, all the time I would just kind of like go in, I'd, I'd spend all night just practicing, you know? That's the type of shit that you would do DJ-wise. I didn't see, like, it, it was weird. If you were a rapper, you, A, half of the time you weren't shit, all right? Straight, but I mean, like, you're like, come on. Man. Like, yeah, yeah, like at least half, man. Yo, no, 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 no. You know, you are the shit. Maybe even if, even if half the time you might not be the shit, when you're on, you're on. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, you could just be something, but it's like, if you know that it's like, yo, the, the, the peaks of where you're at are really like something that like, yo, people need to hear this shit. You 
put the effort into like making sure that you could do that as much as you can. I've seen, man, I've seen you grow over X amount of years. And I've seen a lot of people grow. I've seen a lot of people just like find a lane and just like kind of coast. Uh, that's like me. But the thing <laughs> is, is, you know, it, it's the, it, rappers, it was something easy to do. You didn't have to be invested with equipment and all that. And a lot of times you just did it just to like, you know, be on stage, just, you know, it's the opposite of being low pro. It's like, you like it, you like the spotlight. It's yeah. like, yeah, all my people in the house say, yo, it's like, that's what you want to do. And it's like, and yo, that's that juice. I feel that shit. I love being on stage, but it's not really me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So all I'm saying is that with the DJ thing, you, it, it's like you, you had to, just like you'd have that, like I was saying, like DJs would have a little bit more, uh, uh, more just developed or uh, deeper study of hip hop knowledge. Not that we were studying, but it's you like you're to just know you, all the breaks. You yeah, it's know. like you even know all the whack records yeah. that you bought just for like a party, and you're like, damn man, I bought two copies of that shit. That cost me twelve dollars, and I got to use that shit for a month. But you still have it, and then years later when that becomes something, you're like, oh shit, well. Everybody else don't know that, but you do because yeah. that's becoming your practice records because you just fuck around with them because you don't really need them. Yeah. It, it's it's just something where you get like just a you get real focused to, to to stuff like that. I don't know if that applies to the craft now as much as it did, but at that time, you know, it it, it, it did. So I don't know. Look, I'm just saying that the level of dedication that DJs need needed was something that, like, if you wanted to be anywhere close to good, it, it's it, it's, a, it's a hard study. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, and there weren't no DJ lessons. It wasn't any YouTube or anything like that. And, uh, you know, no Scratch Academy, right. which I don't know if Scratch Academy is still around. They were doing a good thing, but I'm saying, you know, we, we, lear we, we learned and we were, like, making it up while we were learning. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it's something, it's something that fit. And I think that, if anything, that... Uh, that, that, that might have helped focus me, you know? Um, I probably, like, maybe strayed off the, like, the the, the, the path of being, like, a good student. Um, uh, I don't know. Or, like, even trying to be, like, uh, like an athlete or an artist or, I don't know, just, just you know, whatever. I mean, you know, I had a lot of potential. <laughs> you know, I, I chose this, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did. And I'm glad that it brought me... Uh, to Buffalo, of all places. I'm glad it's taken me around the world. I'm glad that it's, you know, it, it's it's been it, it's been it's been a it's been a real cool like voyage, and it's not anywhere close to done. And it's like yeah. along the way, you end up gravitating towards really good people sometimes. Yeah. Well, so let, let's bring it to Buffalo, as you just mentioned. Work. Um What were your, some of your first hip hop experiences in Buffalo? Mm. So I know you got some good stories about that. Well. I could I could go into like what got me here, but it's like uh, you know I just talked about me for a while. I'd like to really think about what Buffalo hip hop is right now, and uh, I could look at, for example, like the first thing that comes up with Buffalo hip hop would be Griselda, for example, and yo, yo that that that's family and all salute and all respect. I mean, it's amazing the night and day between what was not even like fathomable right for buffalo to be able to achieve on like scope and scale and and all of this like i guess we're looking about seven years ago is when hitler for hermes dropped around yeah, in that it was like 2014 so yeah so that's, that's like uh, it's, it's like it's right around that right yeah. but it's like right before that it's like it really there really wasn't much you know i'm, I'm man, see, i don't want to say that because even right here all right uh you know, my first experiences in this lab, it's like, it seems like like a like like an eon ago, but it was like, um, I would say, right here, we recorded something with uh, another uh, Buffalo champion who at the time was going by the name Billy Drees Williams. Oh. And <laughs> now he might, no, at the time, I think he was going by Idris, but anyway, he's... If you know what we're talking about, then that's what's up. The album's Shout called Good Morning, Amy. Yo, that's me. what's up there. That's fam. What's up, man? Yo, big up to Raw and Tell. Big up Trev Thorne. Yo, I mean, there's, there's so much. But see, we went on the Warp Tour, right? Uh, was it Warp Tour? Fuck. Yeah, okay. So we, yeah, I think it was Warp Tour. And um, Tone hit me up because it was his studio at the time. 
And he's like, yeah, can you go on Warped Tour in a week? Everybody calls me on tour, like, with like a week's notice. All right, that, that's, that, that's something that's been so consistent, man. That's, that, you know, that's a whole other podcast, man. Right. You know, straight up, here's the issue. Uh, with this particular um, uh, uh, tour that we were on, we weren't like on stage or headlining. We were on like the little side stages. So we got some sponsorship from like, I think like Vans and Skull Candy because they're like the vendors. So, the, you know, right. but we're not really making no money. We could sell merch though. Now, you're up in the middle of a bunch of vendors who's selling, again, Skull Candy stuff, some skateboard stuff, like, um, I don't know, band sneakers, right. et cetera. So what can we really sell? We got some T-shirts. We got some Yo, we should make a mixtape. Damn. We only got a couple songs that's ready. So Idris is like an old school way. I'm an old school way. And it's like, yo, you know what we should do? We should just do like, do like like 10 joints, like just classic, classic joints, right? So it's like grabbing a bunch of Eric and me, rock him, like paid him full, special ed, I got it made. I don't know, maybe it was, I'm trying to think what else. Like BDP, my philosophy. I don't know. There's, there's, it's like either way. You could you could actually check it out. It's actually called Classics. Um, if when you post this up, I can find the link. It's somewhere. If not, I got going back. It's pretty good. But at the time, you know, we had to craft a couple of the beats that weren't instrumental ready. Mm-hmm. I think like uh, for example, I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. That uses a uh, uh, space by whatever. It's like a, it's a break, um, but whatever. But um, but then the, but then is it boom, and I, that you know you just play on the, and then you get the James Brown horns, then it. So we just kind of like reconstructed that. Uh, we reconstructed a couple of other things, and then uh, mind you, we were going to tour in about a week. So right here, Idris just like does in like a couple of days, lays down ten songs. Like, just, like, with, like, fresh lyrics. You know what I'm saying? A lot of me is writing on the spot. I'm like, yo, we ain't going to be able to get this done, man. It's Monday. He ain't going to get this done until Thursday. Tuesday night, it's like, okay, it's done. Send it up. So he sent it to me. And then I'm like, shit. Now, I got to put it into a mix, like a like an hour-long mix or whatever. And I have two days to do that. And then we had two days to, like, you know, press it up. And we did a photo shoot for it, too. Like, all this happened with just, and just, like, man. Like, I'm talking about five days, and we were... Like kind of like working until like like two three a.m. Knowing that we had to be up at seven each time, and it's like so it was, and then get right on tour, right. you know, which was I mean it, it, it's it's a lot. I would not want to do that right now. <laughs> like nobody, nobody should want to do that. If somebody's like, yeah, I'm built for this, it's like yeah, no, you might be built different, but this is different. Not right now, you can long, really quick hours. Yo, it's like, <laughs> and, and the funny thing is that it was, and it was for like and it was for like no real scratch either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was still like a real good experience. But things that like right here with just the, with 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 the tools that were all here, and it's like you know there, there was there was stuff. There's obviously more now, but just by having like the right people right there and the right heart to be able to do it is something that, man, again, this is way before any spotlight on Buffalo. We've been sitting here like not having any and any of the juice that like other bigger markets had. Anybody in any other market who was at the top of the market, because we were at the top of the Buffalo market, which right. is still pretty little. You know, they'd be like, man, Warped Tour for no money? And we have to make a CD in like five days? Fuck this shit. Man, we got it done. Because that's that's what it is. Like, we, was, we were starving artists type yeah, shit. You know what I mean? Gotta make something happen. And, I mean, I go back and I listen, and I'm like, wow, this shit was really, like, we really did that? Like, in a pressure cooker like that? I expect to go back and be like, yeah, man, if we had more time. No, if we had more time, it wouldn't have even come out as good. Like, for real. Um, and these are, and by the way, Tone. Uh, not, not not Tone, but, like, Tone, Tone X. Uh, big up Tone X. Um, him, Adris, uh, and, and many other people who I'm, I haven't even gotten into at all. We all really met through... Uh, what we started at Broadway Joe's, which was Baby Steps Hip Hop. And that's a couple of Buffalo expatriates are, uh, are are really, really responsible for that. So I so can't... You, you were one of the founders of Baby Steps? Yeah, I would say that I was there on day two. Okay. MC Sick, uh, who's in Chicago right now. Big up Sick. Salute. 
Uh, and also, and really, sick is also from the Bronx. So big up, big up, yo, man. That's my, that's my, that's my homie, man. I really got, I really got to catch up. I hope he sees this. Um, but I'll link up with him. Uh, Tommy, who moved out to Boston, he was an ill DJ. Me and him used to be in every single battle. And he won them motherfuckers. <laughs> I mean, according to the judges. What up, Tommy? <laughs> and I mean, he's in Boston, so it's like, I mean, he don't get the same amount of love as the Bronx do. But yo, Tommy, but Tommy was such an ill DJ and like definitely a super influence. Uh, my boy DJ Cream, who moved out, he, he started Crud Mart here okay, yeah. and moved out, out to Cali. Uh, he was there a little while after me. And let's see, DJ Rich the Snitch, who does still live here, but he don't DJ no more, but he is the, another ill, like, kind of record nerd. Yeah. I'm gonna call him a nerd, he's a good dude, but it's like, you know, I'm yeah. calling him a nerd like I'm calling myself a nerd, right? Um, you know, we were the ones who would be there all the time, and we'd be right, right up in, uh, uh, you know, uh, University Heights, you know, like LaSalle Ave Station. Yeah. Broadway Joe's was the place. Uh, you know, we would do MC showcases. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, yo, those days, man. Uh, it, it's like, and I got to big up Sam and Greg, who were the, the the owners who really allowed it to flourish when a lot of other places weren't trying to, um, you know, deal with our vision or do what we were doing or really move in a way that required, like, a little bit of, I mean, you had to just have, like, faith and trust that, like, things wouldn't go sideways or that it was even going to be, like, worth the money. Uh, but, you know, it, it all it all ended up working out. And, it, you know, it's like I like it when people come back and they're like, yeah, yo, back in the day, Robbie Jones, Baby Steps. I'm like, yeah, it was it was dope. But don't get me wrong, there was a lot of struggle in that too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there would be nights with that. It's like middle of winter where it's like nobody would be showing up. I played a few five people shows at Broadway Jones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's like everybody looks back and they're like, yo, that was so dope, man. You got to bring it back. It's like, yeah, see... You remember all the good shit. The good times, yeah. All the good, like, if, if, if it was all gonna be, if it was all gonna be good times, then why would we have ever stopped? It's like, trust me, when the thing stopped for a reason, man. It's like, right. that, that's, I mean, it's, but I still love those conversations because they, they they bring me back to, to, to kind of like fondly remembered places. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny, just, just for like a point of reference, that was like around 2000. Um, there was, Drool Records that Tommy worked for, they were on Allen. Uh, there weren't a lot of DJ shops up here. And again, still, we were buying records. So yeah. so it's like, so this ended up becoming like, like a, like, like, like a nucleus for hip hop heads, for DJs, for MCs. I mean, it's like you had flyers, anything so like that, mixtapes, you go to Drool. 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 Yeah, it's like, no matter what, it's like, you're going to have to put like, you're going to have to spell it out because people be like, Rule, Drool, and Ja Rule. <laughs> like, like, you know, uh, but no, Drool. And they were more like uh, techno-ish. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we started 716 Records up right near where Broadway Joe's was. And we were more hip-hop based. And let's see. There was a couple shops that were already out here. Dr. Bird's, New Style, et cetera. But, um, w w you know, with, with, with these shops, it's like we end up being able to kind of uh, form a little bit of a community. And it, I don't know, it felt good being a part of all that. It's, uh, it's like, you know, we can look fondly back on all that. But now it's like, you know, you don't need the record stores as more. Although it's like, I like seeing them, like, kind of make the resurgence. Yeah. Uh, and I love spinning vinyl. Like, there's, I mean, it, it's not as convenient. So I see you, you and Cutler always spinning vinyl whenever y'all get a oh, chance. Oh, man, shit. Big up, Cutler. His <laughs> name is on the wall here somewhere, man. Yeah, it's out there, yeah. It's probably like a gold, a gold DJ Cutler record here somewhere. <laughs> you know, whatever. Buffalo Gold. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's like, it, it's good keeping all that alive. But it's kind of good seeing where all of those, all of that groundwork that was laid gets us to now. Uh, I, I Like, Shay, I, I ran into Shay, R.I.P. Shay. R.I.P. Shay. R.I.P. Shay. Shay, holy shit, man. That, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm still like, yeah, that, 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 I still haven't really like, like really made terms with the fact that he ain't here. You between, know what I mean? Between him and Ruckus, I'm in the same. Oh, shit. You know what, man? It's like last year was a tough year, wasn't it? Was it was a man? tough year, man, yeah. R.I.P. Ruckus, man. That was a beautiful day. Yeah. That, that, was, that was a really beautiful day. I mean, like, his memorial was a beautiful day, is what I'm saying. Um, uh, but, 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 but even before that, not, not to skip off that or be jumping around, but Shay, I met through Baby Steps. Actually, no, I met, I met him through 716 Records. And uh, Benny was around then. 
Conway was canon. Two Chain Benny Man. Yeah, there we go. Mm-hmm. There we go. And then uh and then Hoochie Cracker was 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 uh one more. Now we really prided ourselves, or at least we did these MC showcases at Broadway Joe's and it's like yo, keep it underground. Like yo, keep it real. Uh now I don't know. I would have been fine with everybody getting on because we did a monthly showcase. We put on six MCs, that's been a beast for them. It wasn't a battle, but right. just like, you know, just it's just, 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 just a stage, you know what I'm saying? You could shine. Like found a lot of talent through there. Uh, you know, it, it's like I think there was always kind of like there there would be like, you know, like a, a lot like if I could find my old answering machine, because people used to call up my machine. I don't know why I put my number in this shit, but I did, right? <laughs> but uh it's like, yo, all right, yo. You got 30 seconds, yo, leave your number. Don't forget the area code, okay, please. Like, so go, boom. And it's like, so I would have these crazy, just like little demos on this, it's like old school answering machine that I had to record on. So I had like hours, but it's like, that was crazy. Probably cost $500 if I didn't find it off the back of a truck somewhere. But it's like, at that time, it was like the shit. Yeah. So we used this. I don't know where it is now, but I, I guarantee I'd find some ill, ill throwbacks on that. I, I need to start digging for that. But, uh, yeah. It, unfortunately, like, a lot of Shades artists didn't get on, maybe because of some favoritism that was involved, or maybe it wasn't just, like, really seeing everybody's vision. But still, it's like outside of the Baby Steps, Robert Joe's thing, you still would catch up with Shay a lot, because Shay was in the hood, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, for real. And it, it's like, you know, the, the Baby Steps stuff was... Kind of a college, college, college area thing, yeah. you know, and uh, and that, that that's fine, but there wasn't so much of a crossover. Like you know, I didn't see anybody from from like you know Bailey and Delavan, not not too many heads, like making their way up. And I definitely had problems going like you know out to the east side or out to the west side or you know downtown Broadway. Yo, straight up, yo, people were scared, you know. Mm. Um, like, stay, yo, honestly, I live on Broadway. I'm scared to go to Groove Lounge sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight up. It's like, so I get it. I mean, it's real, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, it's, like, a lot more fertile. You also have an internet where you could just, like, put something up, and then no matter yeah. where you are, you could just, like, you know, kind of, like, like make that at least. you Somebody could hear you. Yeah. They could say something back, um, and, and it's all good. But, like, that foundation still laid its way for... Uh, bigger things to happen, to right. get put on for shows. Oh. Like, Red Bull came out, you sponsored a lot of stuff. I was talking about the Warp Tour. Yeah. Uh, Snow Jam kind of took us all across Canada and everything, that was just DJing-wise. I mean, this is just like little stuff when we're gra- when you grab for scraps, this is big, big shit. Yeah. Um, and I would say that it also probably got us onto right around here, at Buff State, Buff State Radio. Uh, 90, 91.3. Right, Sunday Night Legacy of Hip Hop that's now not around no more but you know I mean the, the station is around but uh, it's it, you know nobody's on it <laughs> yeah, well, you know, also nobody really listens to radio and also that place hit because I was doing I was the uh, um, music director for hip hop right so uh, I'd have to hit up all these labels excuse me and while I'm hitting up all these labels they have like a certain and I mean if anybody has done college radio you know how it is it's like all right, yo, what's your demographic? Uh, you know, how long have you been on? Um, who's everybody involved? What do you normally play? What are your playlists? Uh, what distributors do you also deal with? Who's servicing you? How much wattage is your antenna? So, let me get this right. Our, yeah, now, you know, like BLK and everybody down there, it's like they got like 25,000 watts, something crazy, yeah, right? Mile, yeah. uh, and Buff State, and this is why you can't pick up Buff State Radio, even if you're just like, you're, like you're over here on you the Jack really you're good. <laughs> but then it's like when you dip down onto the 90, it's like, then it's like, Arr! it's like, yo, this shit, like it just goes to straight static. It's like, there's just pockets where you could get it. Uh, but what would be crazy is that <laughs> there was this thing that was really important because it's like, if they, if they saw that you had enough wattage, then they would actually send you more stuff. So the antenna at Buff State is 100 watts, 100 that's like that's like a light bulb and a half. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like <laughs> nothing. So I would always fill it in and I'd put a thousand. Cause that's still kind of low. Right. But then somebody pulled my card on and be like, oh, that was a typo. My bad. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, it is a hundred. Is it is it a hundred? You know, it's like you kind of played it like that. But 
either way, it was very like Buff State was. It's like it's almost like damn near private radio. Yeah. And you you could you, even on even on Buff State campus you could hardly get it. Now everything's online, so it's different. Yeah. But uh, but still, like one th those are those things that I'm 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 glad that it was there. But I'm very glad that it doesn't have to be there. Because relying on a hundred watt stations, <laughs> two record stores that are barely scraping to get by, uh, clubs that are not trying to let us in, and no major uh, regional exposure, is not the best formula for really getting things done. So I'm really happy that we are where we are. I really am. Um, I, I but I don't miss. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm I'll put it like this. I don't regret any of that struggle that's there. I look at it super fondly. Yeah. So when people are like, yeah, back in the day, Baby Steps, that was the shit. I'm like, no, it was a struggle. But I'm super fond of it. This place right here brings me back to a lot of that, man. Straight up. Right, right. Well, I'm going to give into this last segment of this. So um, what does Low Pro do outside of the hip hop? Oh, what, are, what are some of your other hobbies? I'm an ordinary guy, man. You know? It's like shit. It's like the playoffs is about to. You know, shit, the game's about to start, yeah, man. About to start. Yeah, about, about to start. About to start. So I ain't gonna and keep I, you too long. No, no, no <laughs> it's all. It's all good, man. Shit, we about to catch this game anyway, man. Shit, where's the TV at? You know, the point is, uh, you know, it's it's like straight up. You know, I, I got I got a job. You know, uh, it's like you know I still still take gigs. I'm not so invested in like the like just you know spinning at a bar type of thing. Buffalo's had like a little bit of. A thing with that. Right. Um, I mean, we could look at a place right near here where it got made national news that like something happened on the opening day, and uh -huh. then the big dress code thing went up, and they caught a lot of smoke for that, which they deserve because yeah, they, they were did. stupid. No names necessary, no names, but you know if they were you stupid. Know, you know. Say, if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but the thing is, all Buffalo clubs have been on that bullshit, yeah. and I watched it. Um, so anyhow, um, so whatever. It's like, you know, it's it's just, you know, I'm in a hustle like everybody else. It's like, you know, I, I work a job that's been lucky that during this whole pandemic, I've been able to kind of work from home right. uh, or work remotely. Um, and, you know, DJ gigs are still there. Uh, you know, I do a little bit of graphic arts, you know, stuff like this, you know. And uh, I don't know. Somehow I'm getting by. <laughs> Buffalo's a cheap place to live, but, you know, it's it's not, it's, it's also very easy to go broke. So all I know that is that it's very it, true. It's a universal concept, though, isn't it? Because we, we drink too much here. Man, <laughs> no, no, everybody else drink too much. I drink just enough. I don't... I, 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 <laughs> that, actually, that's probably the problem. Word. Wait, hold up. Is this a meeting? No, Yo, no, is, no, is, no. Is, 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 this, is this an intervention? <laughs> We're going to walk out. It's going to be his whole family. <laughs> no. So, um, to wrap this up, um, what advice would you have for your younger self, for the people watching, for... In anybody out there that either wants to get into DJ, the, the music industry, or any in anything, like what advice do you have for them to better themselves? Oh man, see, the, you know, like obviously it's like the the normal, like you know, kind of like GI Joe shit. It's like, don't give up, give it your best, <laughs> don't doubt yourself. Uh, but you know, for real, um, I would say to not like just go with something so generic. You know, know your worth. Uh, you know, don't be scared of uh, of taking of taking like risks, and uh, you know, just be be conscious of the people that you keep around you, uh, and you know, try to invest in uh, like you, you can invest in like money and real estate and all that, but it's like if you keep good investments with the people around you, then like when shit ain't going good for you, you can try to make it good for them. And that will be reciprocated. And over time, that's what really pays dividends. Right. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you could come back to me with this and I would probably have some, oh, I should have said this, but uh, no, straight up, it's it, it, it's nice, very nice to be able to look at, uh, you know, your, your resume, your history, and know what and where things could have gone wrong. And know that decisions that you made might have been, uh, uh, you know, even even if they're like questionable decisions, they were worth the risk. So just, you know, always think things through, and you know, don't 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 be don't be afraid to maybe like kind of swim against the stream, and uh, you know, and believe in yourself. 
You see? It's like that. <laughs> be all that you can be. There you go. That's what's up. <laughs> Word up. So before we close out, I just, I just want to tell this quick story. I don't know if you remember this. This is you were spinning at DBs, DBGBs. Huh. This is some, I think it was one of those dollar beer nights. And I, oh, I, there slid, some nights there, I slid you my flash drive. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, you'll play this record. And you looked at me like, boy, if you don't get the hell out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> but then like you looked at me like, I walked away, you're like, I'm going to play it. So I waited for like an hour, maybe two hours. I like trying to wait for you to get to play this damn song. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about accurate. <laughs> and I'm like, like, I ain't playing it. So I leave. And I'm driving home, and I get a text from you. You said, yo, Tony, why didn't you tell me the song was so hot? <laughs> I was like, yo, I was trying to... <laughs> I was like, yo, play the song, play the song. And you text me, yo, yo why didn't you tell me the song was this fire, man? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. You was rolling with Cooley High, bro. Yo, you was rolling with Cooley High. Yo, there was like... Yo, yo, for real. Okay. Y'all have seen some of these podcasts before, so I'm sure that there's been some Cooley High bets, like, around. And if you, like, watched enough of this or... Whatever. I mean, it gets mentioned a lot. We're, we're going to get the Cooley Boys in. Okay, well, just understand. Yeah, that, that's got to be like, that's got to be an extended season. Like, straight up, man. Because <laughs> we got a lot They had a fucking posse, man. <laughs> it's like, these dudes would be walking down the sidewalk. You would have to, like, really just change your plans. It's like, they would, yo, it's like, there was so many of them on stage. So it's like, at the time that you hit me up with that, I'm just like, yeah, that's Tony, man. Maybe that's Gaines. I don't know who the fuck. I don't know. Just, it's, it's one of the motherfuckers. I, yo, I'm trying to work a night here, man. Like, straight up. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> Zip crap. And I played it, I'm like, damn. Yeah, that yo, that yo, that okay. Okay, that, 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 that one goes. I that one. Maybe I maybe <laughs> I should actually pay attention and like not just thinking that like I'm I'm a gatekeeper and I should just be like dinner dinner, keep it moving. I, I'm sorry about doing that. But uh Well But yeah. It's all good. We're here now. It's all good, man. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Thanks for talking to me, man. Actually, thanks for having me. Yeah, this man. is Tony Boy. Outside influence, and we just closed out season four. Peace. Yo, good shit. I didn't know, I didn't know, I did not know this was the closeout, man. <laughs> Damn, man. I had no idea. Three, two, one.